Hi, my name is Amish Agarwal. I'm an advocate. I practice in New Delhi. Flipkart billionaire founder Sachin Bansal was very very recently accused by his wife of a plethora of offenses, the usual offenses which every wife files against her husband. The offenses are section 498A, section 406 and a bunch of other offenses which we have not gone through the FIR so we are not privy to that information. I do not want to be quick to judge. I do not want to come to conclusions based on my prior experiences but I'm afraid in this situation especially so I must come to one. I was reading the news in which it was mentioned that Sachin's wife filed a case against him and it's very interesting so let's just go through a few lines of that article together. The woman filed a case against Sachin and three of his family members. She accused them of seeking dowry and gifts and torturing her physically and mentally. In the complaint, she also accuses him of sexually assaulting his sister. She alleges that her husband and his family demanded dowry and gifts at the time of their marriage. She has named the family, the relatives. She says that her father spent rupees 50 lakhs on her wedding and gave him also rupees 11 lakhs cash in lieu of a car. She charged that thereafter he pressurized her to transfer her properties to his name. She claimed that when she refused to do so, she was harassed by her in-laws. Up until this point of time, I would still give her the benefit of doubt. I could still for a moment tell myself, do not come to conclusions and just assume that it's a false case. It could very well be, you know, it could very well be possible. And the reason why I say this is, you know, even, even the most absurd of explanations would be that the duo found the company in the year 2007 and or 2007 and perhaps the even their initial investment which was infused by some investor was just about rupees 10 lakh rupees that person made millions of dollars now from that rupees 10 lakh investment however i can imagine a moment i can imagine a scenario where uh, the two co-founders needed a lot of money and therefore perhaps this could be something that could have actually happened however what a lot of wives do and in fact it's not even the wives it's the lawyer of the wives who first and foremost convince the wife to file such a case in order to extract maximum amount of money when the couple is parting ways and moreover, just to have a stronger case, to build a stronger case, when lawyers slip in facts which are also necessary to establish a stronger assault on the case of the husband. What they do is they try to introduce unnecessary facts and this is precisely what was done by her lawyer because of which Sachin will go scot-free. Or at the very least, in my mind, I am 100% convinced that these allegations are just one of those run-of-the-mill false allegations. The case is completely false and frivolous. And the reason why I know this is because of this line. She says, My husband and in-laws have been giving me mental and physical torture since the wedding for dowry. That's all right. That's all right. When my sister was in Delhi, Sachin had sexually assaulted her. Sachin, now this is relevant. Sachin had tried to transfer all properties in my name to his name and when I refused, Sachin had physically assaulted me on 20th October 2019. At this point of time, you can, you and I can be 100% certain that this is a false concocted story. The reason why is because this man 
was worth rupees 700 i'm sorry this man at the time of the incident alleged by the wife was worth rupees 7000 crores and i can say it with a reasonable amount of certainty that any man who is worth 7000 crores would not go to the extent of or if, if he might be abusive he might be mentally incredibly abusive he could be the world's most like terrible husband but for him to beat to assault his wife to have properties in her name transferred in his name when he is a billionaire and i don't mean an indian rupee billionaire i mean a dollar billionaire 7000 crore rupees he is the owner of at that point of time for him to beat his wife to have properties in her name unless those properties turn out to be uh, value to the tune of maybe three four hundred crore rupees unless that is happening it is impossible for me to imagine a scenario like this where he would beat her up so that he could convince her to get the properties transferred in his name and this is one flaw that i wanted to point out that a lot of lawyers do when they are filing their complaints for wives that husbands should take advantage of when they are approaching the courts for grant of bail for fighting their cases and they can set up a very very strong defense for themselves so that they do not suffer any of the um, devastating futures which are otherwise awaiting most husbands when a wife comes and files these complaints the devastating future is facing arrest for yourself for your loved ones for your parents your sister your brother facing high maintenance amounts on inflated allegations made by the wife facing allegations of domestic violence and and your wife seeking civil compensation against you for those alleged acts of domestic violence done by you and apart from that alimony at the time of grant of divorce these are all things which will leave so many husbands in absolute financial mental spiritual ruin which if small flaws like this can be exploited early on by a husband it can be avoided very very easily by them sachin's case is a great example of course it's a very very highlighted example and it's a great lesson for all of us to look at and learn from